Good afternoon, all, or good evening, more appropriately. This is the practitioner here. Um, I'm now attempting to do my 10 minute or as close to 10 minute segment as I can on global warming. So, uh, let me give you a brief example of what the greenhouse effect is. The greenhouse effect is the um, capability of certain chemicals, um, gases, um, water, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, methane, etc., all to absorb a certain frequency of light called infrared radiation. What this does is that helps make the Earth um, attenu you know, basically tenu tenable and um, safe for living on. Um, water, which it, uh, does over 70% of this, um, mitigates also some of this by cloud cover, thus reversing global warming from happening too quickly. Now, because of the fact that there is um, uh, all the, because of the fact that everything is in roughly perfect balance, um, on the right hand side here I've listed quite a few number of sources. Um, I, I, before I go any on, I'd, I'd like you to check all these for my exact stats and numbers, including the uh, parts per million to milligrams per um, meters cubed converter, and as well also the two textbooks I mentioned there are um, good to be so you can get the uh, uh, exact mathematical equations I use to calculate uh, the bulk of this, and so this way you can plot it out for yourself and see where the science is actually leading. Okay, so that having been said, the um, overall energy. Okay, so. Um, I've done some calculations based on the um, existing stuff, and basically I'll tell you exactly how global warming works. What happens is that um, because of the fact that carbon dioxide, etc., also have natural amounts that happen in the atmosphere, and there are certain natural fluctuations of the temperature. These are meant to be climate cycles, you know, periods between ice ages and you know, and, l and lesser times, that sort of thing. Like that's all healthy for the Earth. However, when too much carbon dioxide is put up into the atmosphere, that upsets the balance. It's like super saturating an exo already existing solution. You put a little sugar in, you stir it too much, um, there's a beyond a point at which the rate of solution will no longer work. Um, the same happens here. You put too much carbon dioxide up, um, it absorbs infrared radiation depending on its vibration, um, an equal amount at the same amount, um, you know, at a given rate, and then it releases it back at a given rate. So if you put more up there, it uh, increases the overall energy, which over increases the overall temperature. So. Let me give you some ideas. The first um, way how that we're, the first way to measure this is the fact that we know um, that there is a um, we know for a fact that there is only some 13 million million tons of water up there, and um, again, one of the sources on the right gives a specific uh, gives the specific absorbent structures. Um, the exact figures based on calculation out from um, converting the uh, the wave number, uh, doing one over the wave number to uh, to wavelength, dividing by from the speed of light to give frequency, then multiplying by Planck's constant, multiplying by the number of uh, multiplying by the number of uh, by the number of um, you know by the, by the Avogadro's constant to get a mole, and then multiplying by the number of moles of water um, which are in the atmosphere gave us the total amount of water infrared radiation being absorbed in general right now as being about um, where are we here? Uh, 1.14 times 20, 10 to the 21 uh, times 10 to the power of 21 kilojoules um, on average. That's you know depending on vibrate. That's on average depending, assuming that each one of the three vibrations is at equal time. Again, if my math is wrong for using averages, go and um, check the sources, and you can calculate each one for for each individual vibration. If it turns out to be total, it could be much bigger. Um, the same goes on for um, carbon dioxide, uh, again, which has um, absorbance rates at 4.26 micrometers and uh, 15 micrometers, um, again, using the same process and then multiplying um, using the original 280 um, parts per million plus minus 10 um, that was in existence beforehand, um, before 1750, you know, during that fluctuation during the last 450,000 years. Um, the average uh, energy then has been about 1.4. Uh, one four times, um, uh, uh, sorry, has been about originally about 8.3 times 10 to the 15th uh, kilojoules on average, but since the industrial revolution and now to present, because we have now uh, 383 parts per million by volume of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, it is now um, uh, 1.14 times 10 to the 16th kilojoules um, being absorbed by the atmosphere. Now the problem with this is that as there's a rise in energy, uh, there is also a rise in temperature. Um, part of this is due to the kinetic, uh, kinetic theory of mo uh, kinetic molecular theory. Um, you know, more energy uh, causes further vibration, which causes you know um, the, ga the gases to start working a little bit faster, start bouncing each other. Basically, the overall net means that there's a rise in 0 0.5 degrees centigrade. But um, you know, with more, if more carbon dioxide goes up there, you know, further rise in energy. Um, now there is a problem with this in um, uh, according to the following uh, formula: PV equals nRT. Now, 
uh, what would happen is that in order for um, pressure times volume equals the number of moles times the, re the gas constant times the, um, times the uh, temperature in Kelvin. Now as the temperature in Kelvin arises, since we have the same number of moles, um, well not counting the growing number of moles of, uh, of, you know, of CO2 being put up there, but what with the growing number of moles, we, um, in order for the two to work out, um, since the number of moles and the temperature are both rising, the pressure, uh, and since the volume is, uh, since the volume is essentially constant, I mean, we know it's 0.3, but the thing is that, you know, it's always constantly bouncing around in the atmosphere, so the entire atmosphere, which is actually a volume of uh, 5.45 times 10 to the 13th meters cubed, uh, again, sources on the right um, talk about that. Uh, the way to do that, um, by the way, just so you know how to calculate the volume of Earth's atmosphere, um, take, the, uh, take the height of the atmosphere, add it to the existing radius of the Earth, do a um, calculation for the volume 4 over 3 pi r cubed, then do a volume calculation for the Earth along without the atmosphere, minus the uh, volume of the Earth away from the minus of the volume of the Earth plus the atmosphere uh, radius, and then you have the volume of the atmosphere. So, but since it's constantly bouncing around, um, this is the same volume, which means an overall temperature is rising. That's one of the reasons why the, um, despite the high resonant energy absorbed by the carbon dioxide, um, it's not doing one times ten to the thirteenth or something like that in terms of temperature, but because of the fact that it's scattered all through over the atmosphere, it's doing a net rise of 0 0.5 degrees is done a net rise of 0 0.5 degrees centigrade and probably another two by 2100 according to the IPCC reports um, again sources on the side here so um, that having been said um, again there's pretty much um, now the problem is those that um, PV equals NRT back to the original point if you increase the temperature and you increase the number of moles, that's going to do two, one of two things. One of which is that since the temperature has risen, the um, amount, the rate at which water, namely the polar ice caps, are going to melt, combined with um, uh, combined with also the rate at which the va and since the vapor pressure has also increased, the rate at which water evaporates. Since both of those have increased, that means that um, the predictions such as the polar ice caps melting, Greenland melting, and more water evaporating contributing to further significant um, to significantly further uh, increase in temperature and you know further expansion of the global warming issue um, is ha um, is all but is entirely possible. Um, a pivotal example of this is um, this particular question out of my textbook here, 12.49. The question is: There are two beakers, one of both of which are start off as being equal to equally full. Um, uh, one of them has completely fresh water. The other one the other one has. Uh, uh, zero point, uh, sorry, point zero one moles of um, uh, moles, molar concentration of sodium chloride or salt in it, and the other beaker. Both are put under a sealed um, container. Which one is going to? Um, what are the levels of the beakers going to be afterwards, and uh, why? Well, this is the end result. This is the uh, beaker full of salt water. This what? This over and this over here was the beaker that was completely full of fresh water. So let me find the original calculate. Um, uh, and, well, I'm and basically the reason is because of the fact that um, salt, uh, fret, um, salt water has a much higher, um, sorry, the vapor pressure um, basically has a higher boiling point and a lower vapor pressure uh, for salt water than for fresh water. Uh, because of the fact of all this melting of the ice caps, that's also going to mean that the, uh, there's a higher vapor pressure, meaning more water um, being uh, released into the atmosphere due to vapor because the water, uh, the net salt water is being more brackish. This will do two things, one of which is screw up the storms, such as, uh, hence the reasons why they say that Hurricane Katrina and other stuff like that was caused by global warming. And the second issue being, um, and the second issue being that of, um, uh, you know, so that, and the second issue of that, of course, being that, uh, um, well, basically, that you know that the system, such as the um, Gulf Stream, etc., are going to get screwed up because uh, the water um, the water is now brackish, which means since the higher temperature, um, since wa fresh water has a higher boiling point and a higher vapor pressure, um, because of the higher vapor pressure, the va vapor pressure also increasing, um, combined with temperature, which is also going to um, you know it's also going to just basically melt more water, um, courtesy of raising vapor pressure at a um, you know it's going to evaporate and melt more water at an increased rate. What this is going to do is this is going to fuck up the entire ecosystem. Um, let me just show you uh, one. Let me find the example 12.41. See, this is the original. And both, both the uh, pure water and the salt water are completely equal. So, hopefully, that gives a rough explanation of global warming. I'll try to go to it in greater detail in other videos. If you have any questions, please do post. Um, if you want to double check my math, please check the sources by the side or ask me any questions. I will consult experts um, if you need uh, further experts. If you need any further advice.